I think what's interesting about what the government and the cabinet have just signed off on is that they're going to have a discussion about our so-called uh, role in the modern world and security, etc. But it's really about neutrality. And it's being couched as a way of saying, well, we're opening the discussion with academics, technicians, uh, politicians, etc. But what they're avoiding are the citizens. And what we've always asked for is a citizens' assembly on neutrality and a referendum following that, that would allow the Irish people a real say in what they think. And I think the government are very nervous, even frightened, of a citizens' assembly on neutrality. I've sat on three different Rewactus committees from three different uh, citizens' assemblies. A hundred or ninety-nine citizens randomly chosen sit down and ha bear witness and get witness from um, all the, the sort of angles that Neil talked about there. But the thing is that they come up with the decisions. And Ireland's neutrality has increasingly and frequently uh, returned, you know, in polls and, 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 and in popular opinion, has shown that people want to maintain their neutrality and the government don't want that and they're afraid of the people. The people are always ahead of the government and the politicians when it comes to citizens' assemblies. So that's what we want to see, is yeah. a citizens' assembly, discussion of ordinary people. Uh, the experts can come in and say what they want to say on both sides of the argument, but it is the people who make the uh, recommendations. Neil, why not a citizens' assembly? Well, there may be a citizens' assembly in due course, but the what the the, the Taoiseach or Taunish, Taoiseach at the time, now Taunish has said a number of months ago in the Dáil is that we want to have that forum because there is an ill-defined perception of what actually is our neutrality. It's, it's not written down in law, it's not in our constitution, and it's a political decision. And when we look at what's going on at the moment in the world, there's constant um, charges that the government is going beyond our neutrality. At the end of the day, we're not neutral. We're not politically neutral. We're part of the European Union. We have a, a defence memorandum of understanding with the United Kingdom. We support Ukraine. We provided all the resources we can in non-lethal goods. Um, but then it comes to what are we going to train um, Ukrainian soldiers to clear minds. We think that isn't a breach of our military neutrality. Others would say different and I respect that opinion. But we do want to have an informed discussion about all aspects. It's not just about but neutrality. But again, but why can't that informed discussion be a citizens' assembly? And it may be in due course. No one's ruling out a citizens' assembly. No one's ruling out a referendum. And no one's ruling out uh, an Oireachtas joint, a joint Oireachtas committee. But the decision was made, and this was driven very firmly by um, by the Tonish. And I think he's right. I fundamentally do agree with him. And I called for similar in the Dáil as a backbencher that we have this robust discussion that actually looks past the binary issue of neutrality and deeps digs into genuinely what can we do to make sure that cyber security is greater protected? How do we cooperate in terms of information sharing? How do we protect offshore sea cables? Actually deal into the issues that simply going uh, to or kneel on a referendum on neutrality might miss the point on. Breed, so we might get to a citizens' assembly eventually. I don't believe that. This at is all. just the. I think this is a side step in the issue of a citizens' assembly the and Breed. a referendum, and I think that's the reason the cabinet signed off on it. You see, if you weren't concerned about the people's opinion on neutrality, you would go straight to a citizens' assembly. This is just cosmetics to be able to say, well, we talked to experts, we brought in people from the arms industry, we brought in people who know about cyber secu security, we listened to them, and now we believe that our um, erosion of neutrality is the correct way to go. You may not use those terms but the Taoiseach is clearly talking in terms of the evolving role of Irish neutrality in the insecure world we live in. And I agree the world is insecure but it is also splitting and what this will do is attempt to line us with one side or the other and that would be from our perspective, from the left's perspective, from ordinary people's perspective I honestly believe this would be extremely unwelcome and dangerous. Well respectfully Reid I have no intention of seeing us aligned with China or with Russia and I don't think anyone would considering what Vladimir Putin is doing in Ukraine at the moment but we do need to have a genuine discussion because we don't fear the people's opinions and actually you talk about opinion polls more and more Irish people based on consistent Red Sea opinion polls from European Movement Ireland saying they want to see Ireland take on a more um, serious role when it comes to common security and defence. These are facts Reed. you can shake your head, you can be cynical about the government's uh, intentions and that's fine but the bona fides and the facts are we're going to have four meetings in June forums where everyone will be invited and then we'll see what the responses are that to have that 
genuine discussion that we're not just simply shouting across slogans uh, across each other in the Dáil Chamber He's or on protest lines. You've as if you're the most polite and decent and honest and open people I'd like in the to think world. I am quite polite but and decent. you just said breed. that you don't want to align with Russia or China, neither does Breed Smith. But would you want to align with America and the European Union and yes. their military strategy? We're and members of the saying, European you're Union, Breed. Yes, you want to align Breed, yourself with their Breed, military Breed. strategy. No, no, hold back, That's Breed. the question. We are, no, the question, members, Breed. But we don't have to align with their military strategy. The qu- Look, question, me, Breed, isn't binary. This is the point. Where do we want to involve ourselves in the European Union? We have allies. We are the European Union. They've been very good allies to us over the last couple of years. The US is our biggest economic, socio-economic partner. We're going to welcome their president next month. We welcome, or next week, we welcome him with open arms. I hope you do too, because all his faults and all America's faults, they are an important ally of Ireland. But we want to have a discussion that doesn't simply say we stay in the middle and say uh, we take no opinion. But you're not thing. in the middle. Can't, You've just made no, it but very this is, clear this, on we radio don't want that you're not in the middle. Breed, you're I, on the side of the Breed, US and the European Union's I know. military ambitions. You've just made Breed, that very clear. And I'm saying you want to stay in the middle and take no opinions and everything. No, no, we, it's not. No, but not, the, geez, the, well, no, sorry, the draft I think Breed has plenty of opinions on yeah, it. Yeah, but the draft bill that you're, you presented for a referendum wouldn't have allowed us to do half the things that we've been able to do for Ukraine over the last number of months. Good things, important things, funding peace, funding prosperity, funding uh, rebuilding in Ukraine and supporting um, those people who've been that displaced. That bill on the referendum could easily have been no, amended it was, if it was allowed to go forward. Can I, can I ask These a, things are always being held But that back. wasn't your opinion. Your opinion I'm, was I'm to asking stay a the question now. Breed, is it your contention that we remain members of the European Union but that we remain utterly neutral when it comes to military issues yes, within the European yes, Union. Yes, I do believe we so should if, be if Poland was a, if Poland was attacked, we'd say nothing to do with us. Well, we would politically offer uh, support, obviously. And to be honest with you, the biggest danger to us is not uh, what, where we align. It is actually what's happening at the moment. The most recent uh, breach of peace and perspective peace in this country was when uh, British Army, um, our British Navy uh, mounted trawlers and moved trawlers off the coast of Donegal in 2020. That's recorded. I would have thought when the cyber hack on our health system a couple of years ago was the biggest breach but of our the, security. The cyber stuff will happen regardless of yeah, the Yeah, but military you work with partners within the take. European Union and within the US and within private sector and public sector to share information on these rogue agents, many of whom are operating but out that, of Russia. That, that, that is you, the biggest that step. That was breach our without, health service That you breach. can do without We're seeing, breaching our military neutrality. And how? See, when we have again, shared security and defence. Let me put the this maker point, then you make your point. to both you and the people out there listening. We are in a very dangerous world and if we're mm. all being told to choose sides just go and watch the recent award win- winning film All Quiet on the Western Front and see how useless wasteful and destructive war is do we want to choose sides or do we want to maintain a politically neutral role where we can act within the UN within the European Union as honest brokers and go and try and find resolutions to conflicts because sometimes resolutions need to be found and neutra- neutral countries like ours who have a high reputation you would say say this yourself within the United Nations within the European Union could play a very very useful role in brokering and helping to bring about an end to conflict now nobody seems to want to talk about that but I think at the end of the day at some point somewhere along the line war has to stop whether it's this one or the last one or the second world war they have to stop and the sooner we can act as a peace uh, peace loving peace creating broker who don't have uh, skin in the game either Mm. on the side of the Americans and NATO or on the side of Russia and China.